Hi right, guys, Buildzoid here, and as a quick break from the... Oh no. Uh, from the Gigabyte motherboard onslaught, we've got an Asus motherboard! Unfortunately, it's not very good, because it's a low-end Asus motherboard. And honestly, even high-end Asus motherboards these days are kind of cheap in the VR... Well, not even kind of cheap. Uh, rather cheap in the VRM department, but, uh... Yeah, the, like, when, when you go low-end, it's just, like, it's it's a whole different story. So, um, there's no, you know, quality of life, uh, well, qual uh, overclocking quality of life features anywhere on this motherboard. No debug LEDs, no no postcode. Um, yeah, so that's, that's great, you know, love that. Um, no buttons, no dual BIOS, no socketed BIOS, so, you know, it's like, if you break this board, you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a great day. But uh, anyway, um, let's just get right into the VRM because that's really all there is to this thing. Um, and there's not really much to that either. Anyway, vCore VRM is this lovely group of four phases. I know it looks like eight, but the funny thing is like, the, the thing is Asus already had a tough B450 MATX motherboard. And essentially what this motherboard is, is that they've changed the chokes. Um, before you'd have one choke, giving it away that it's a four phase. Now you get two chokes, so it looks like it's an eight, but it's still a four because they haven't changed anything else. Which is just like, yay, I mean, you know. Like, some, some motherboard manufacturers are, uh, improving, and, uh, Asus is currently doing their best to go backwards as quickly as possible. You know, it's like, at least before, they didn't try to fake how many phases were hiding under the heat sinks. Well, now they are. So, that's that's great. I love that. Um, really appreciate it, Asus. Like, you know, Gigabyte has just about stopped doing this recently, and and, and you quickly jump in to replace them. I mean, what, well, <laughs> what more could we ask for, right? Anyway, so that's the vCore VRM, that's the VSOC. Um... Sock. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit late. I'm a bit tired. I, I might have a bit of a cold, so... Anyway, uh, vCore VRM, as, as I just said, this is not a one, two, three... Like, I know it looks like it, but the, the chokes are in parallel. There's one driver for every four uh, MOSFETs. In fact, if you if you just ignored the, the presence of these chokes here, um, this set of MOSFETs and this layout of the MOSFETs and the drivers is identical to what they have on the this board's predecessor. So, yeah, they've literally just changed what chokes they're using, which is just like, great, awesome, amazing, incredible. But anyway, like, one phase on this thing is a block like that, so... Yeah, it's a it's a big four it's a, it's a four phase and it's not really even fair to like call it a big four phase because I used to do that and I've thought about it and I'm like, well... That doesn't work, because if this was replaced with a 70 amp power stage, you'd technically have more components, but that 70 amp power stage would be better than all four of these MOSFETs put together. So you can't, like, physically, sure, it takes up a lot of space, there's just not a whole lot of, well, performance in all that space. So, yeah, you end up with a, you know, one, two, three four phase uh, VRM here. It's controlled by this lovely chip over here, which is an ASP1106. Um, I don't actually know what that corresponds to, but that's what it is. It's an ASP1106. The SOC VRM is a two phase. Um, so you get one and two. And the MOSFETs are the Asus favorite, well, Asus and Gigabyte favorites. Um, I, I'm not a fan of these, but the low side right here is, uh, well, actually, no, Asus uses a slightly different MOSFET. It's a 4C06B instead of a 4C06N, but when Elmore still worked at Asus, he confirmed for me that the B and the N, like, the B variant of these MOSFETs matches the N, N variant almost completely. So we're just doing everything with, uh, with, with the data sheet for the 4C06N MOSFET, and then on the high side, we have the 4C10B. Which is, again, you know, you interchangeable with the 4C10N. So that, that's the ones I'm actually running the calculations off of, because the, the the B variant doesn't have pub public data sheets, but the Ns do. Um, so let's talk uh, VRM efficiency, because this really isn't, like, this is not new. This is basically the same VRM you would get on an X470 Ultra Gaming, and we already know that motherboard has 
some of the worst VRM thermals in my testing. So I just straight up, like we don't even need to go over the efficiency. Like I would not put a 2700X on this motherboard, just period. Don't put a 2700X on this motherboard. Don't put a 2700X, uh, I mean 2700 on this motherboard. 2600X, you're probably going to be fine. But I would like to point out that technically MSI has a bunch of, well, 2600X might actually make sense on this motherboard, just kind of because it does have, like, MSI still doesn't have offset negative offset voltage. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, I've finally gotten some MSI contacts, so, so I'll send them an email like, hey, Hey, could you fix that? Because it's the only reason why I can't recommend your motherboards for the X-Series CPUs. But when it comes to like a 2600, um, MSI motherboards are just better. Like, yeah. Um, but when it comes to APUs, I think this motherboard, like APUs is where I would actually consider this motherboard okay. But anyway, let's talk, let's go over the efficiency figures. They're really just straight up in line with the ultra gaming. So we're talking uh, 1.42 volts output because I'm still using the old voltage ratings that I used for the Ryzen first gen. Do keep in mind the second gen being manufactured on 12 nanometers is not as voltage tolerant as the second, uh, as the first generation. The first generation was on 14 nanometer. 12 nanometer is quite a bit more leaky and so you can't cram quite as much voltage into it. Generally there you'd want to stop around 1.38 eight volts uh, instead of 1.42 volts. Now uh, 1.42 volts out, 300 kilohertz, and uh, 12 volts drive, which is actually standard for these kinds of low-end motherboards. So then, uh, th VRM efficiency, 1.42 volts, 75 amps output. Well, actually, we don't need to put the voltage everywhere because I've written it up there. So, so it's just my notes are still the, like, I copy-pasted my notes for one of the other motherboards, so the notes are still in the old, uh, old standard, and I'm just copying them off right now. Anyway, 75 amps, uh, you'd be looking at about 10.3 watts of heat, which, considering that Asus at the very least upgraded the heat sinks on this thing, um, is not going to be like that. That's going to be added, like that's going to be fine. So like a quad core CPU, as, as I said, APUs and six cores are going to be just fine on this motherboard. The eight cores, not so much. Uh, 100 amps output, so this is where the eight, uh, like this is where the six core would land, or the first gen eight cores, because again the leakage has gone up with the new chips, so they actually pull more current for any given voltage. Um, 100 amps output, you're going to be looking at about 16 watts of heat, which the heat sinks on this look like they should be just about able to dissipate. Like I've seen the heat sinks, they they look. Like, they don't look amazing, but they look like they should just about keep the motherboard below overheating. Um, though it is worth noting that, like, MSI does technically have a switching frequency advantage. And I think um, if you, like, and ultimately I think that means if you run the... Like, the MSI boards should actually overclock better, because the MSI boards ramp up their voltage regulator all the way to 450 kilohertz once they're under full load, whereas Asus boards and Gigabyte motherboards, like, I think this board probably, like, it'll have Digi Plus settings. I think stock, it probably ships if it's like the B350 board I had from Asus, which uh, I tested. It'll ship stock at, like, 150 kilohertz, and then you can set it to 300 kilohertz. Um... And that's great and all, but basically you're going to have more output ripple because it's still a four phase and it's running less switching frequency than, you know, some of the MSI motherboards. So, yeah. Also, um, I just noticed this. I'm pretty sure these two capacitors over here are actually hooked up to the SOC VRM because there's no bulk capacitance on the SOC. Other than, like, and you can kind of see how the power plane is being all funky. So this might look like it's all output filtering for vCore. It's not. That's that there is def almost certainly SOC. So yeah. Um, anyway, but you know, again, for a C for a lower lower core count CPU, it's going to be fine. It's just that once you hit the eight core and the 125 amps, these things can pull once you start hammering them. This VRM is going to produce about 22.5 watts of heat, and uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to overheat at that point. Just like, or at least not run at temperatures that I would consider acceptable without going as far as like zip tying a fan to the heatsink or something. So for that reason, like I just wouldn't recommend running a 2700 or a 2700X in this, um, you know, so yeah, it's, it's not great. I mean, it's not also, it's technically not a complete disaster either. I'm really glad that they actually added the heatsink on the SOC VRM because the SOC VRM is actually pretty, pretty decent. 
um, it's actually kind of an advantage. Like, I'd consider this motherboard better than, say, MSI motherboards when it comes to APU overclocking, mostly because of the fact that this actually has the SOC VRM under a heatsink. We're still talking about the same high side and low side MOSFETs, but um, ultimately, with the with the uh, SOC VRM running 1.2 volts out, uh, 300 kilohertz switching frequency, and uh, you know, still on 12 volts drive. Uh, right, I forgot to write down DRV on the other one, but anyway, with those operating par parameters, this SOC VRM actually does a pretty decent job just because there's so many MOSFETs in it, which is the same situation as the MSI boards, except this has an actual heatsink on it, so that's that much better. Um, so 20 amps output, you're going to be looking at about 2.1 watts of heat, which is very little and basically means that if you're like, that, that's just great. And it's mostly because there's so many damn MOSFETs. Now, uh, 30 amps output, you're going to be looking at more like 3.7 watts of heat, which is still fine. Like the heat sink, like especially if you're on an APU, then the V-Core VRM will actually not be that stressed. So the heat being produced by this phase will be much like this phase over here will be much lower. And so, you know, the SOC VRM will really be able to dump all of its heat into a heat sink that's almost meant for cooling three phases at the same time. So um, this is really not going to be a problem going up to 40 amps. You know, we're, we're going to start looking at about 5.6 watts of heat, which is still really low. And then 50 amps, even there, you're going to be looking at only about 7.8 watts of heat, which the heat sink that's sitting on top of this should be, ju should be able to dissipate no problem. So I think this is like a really, like this could be a really good fit for APU overclocking. Um, I'm just like, I just wouldn't put an 8-core on this. Like, there's motherboards that just have better VRMs for 8-core overclocking. Though, I guess if you're, uh, I guess if you're willing to, like, sacrifice aesthetics for cramming a fan onto the VRM, you could technically get away with this. Um, like, it's not, like, sim like the, the Ultra Gaming didn't really fail that badly. It ultimately, if I remember my testing correctly, it ended up at around 115 degrees Celsius in a sort of normal airflow environment, which was like, well, um, I mean, that's not great, but that's not a complete flaming disaster as far as I'm concerned. And so here it's like, you know, the heatsink might not be as large and maybe not have as much surface area. But even then, if you just stick a fan on it, you're going to be able to run an 8-core. It's just MSI boards wouldn't necessarily require that you do anything at all, you know. So, and also the MSI boards do have that switching frequency advantage. So, yeah, that might actually translate to better overclocking on the 8-core CPUs. But um, ultimately, Asus has a more complete BIOS most of the time as well. So, yeah, th this could be, you know, th it, th this is one of those boards, like, the VRM is not great, but it, overall, like, APUs, sure, 6 cores, sure, 8 cores, eh, I, I'd say that's kind of pushing it. But uh, it would be doable if you cram enough airflow into the VRM. Now then for uh, memory power, we have a single phase. And I don't actually know what exact MOSFETs those are, but DDR3, DDR4 really doesn't use enough power for us to be concerned about what that is. It's going to be fine. Um, but it is just a single phase over there. And yeah, that pretty much covers it. There's really not that much on this motherboard, is there? Um, so you get a, you know, you get a Poser 4-phase VRM. <laughs> well, Poser 8-phase, or uh, also known as a 4-phase. Um... But it's, it's still a solid four phase. Like, I don't get why they have this need to do this with the chokes. If they kept the same chokes and just upgraded the heat sinks, I would have already been pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, as it is, they're trying to fake the ten, like fake the, the look of the phases. But it's still, like, you know, for an APU, I think this would be a great fit. For a six core, it should be fine. Eight core, not so much. And, you know, thanks to the guy who actually sent in the pictures, because they were really handy. And I guess I'll also show you the pictures of the heat sinks right here. Um, Gimp's going to take its time. There we go. So you have a banana for scale, which is completely useless. Also, this photo is very yellow. Um, but as you can clearly see, they are sinking, you know, they are sinking uh, all of the MOSFETs, right? And they're also sinking the actual chokes, as you can see here. So yeah, cooling wise, I think this will be like, like these heat sinks look pretty substantial. So, and they they have actual fins cut into them. Can, can you believe it? Um, so, 
yeah, like it should be, it should do okay, but there's definitely motherboards with better VRMs out there. At, at the like, even on B450 in the MATX form factor, it's just that Asus probably has the best, uh, best equipped BIOS out of the cheap uh, B450 motherboards out there. So yeah, you know, kind of difficult to just go like, okay, this this is completely terrible. I mean, I really wish the VRM was better, but. You know, you, you can kind of make up for that with heat sinks and airflow. So that uh, is it's kind of the verdict here. Um, so, yeah, that's the that's the tough B450M Pro Gaming. Um, a Asus has like Asus has a desperate need to fake the number of phases they have on a motherboard that really wouldn't be that bad if they just, you know, like j just from the heat sinks alone, it would have been fine, in my opinion. But oh, well, uh <laughs> At least, at least nowhere on this motherboard's website, like I've gone to the motherboard's page, nowhere do they mention how many phases it has, or at least I've not seen where anywhere they mention how many phases it has. And so I'm fine with the fact that they might be faking the, like, well, I'm not fine with it, but I, I don't have quite as much of a problem with it as if they were saying that they actually had an A plus two phase, because they don't, they have a four. But yeah, that is it for the video. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, que uh, comments, questions, should, uh, suggestions down in the comment section below. Um, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, uh, I have a Patreon and t-shirts. You can find a link to both down in the description below. And uh, yeah, one last time, huge thanks to the guy who sent the, the pictures of this motherboard in. Um, because otherwise we really wouldn't be taking a look at it. I, I'm honestly kind of disappointed because when I first saw the, the press release for this board, um, I saw all the extra chokes and I was like, oh my god, Asus is making a non, not completely terrible B450 MATX motherboard. And then I got these pictures and I was like, they, they literally just replaced the chokes. That's, that's all they did to the previous B450 board they had. But still, I mean, as you know, it's not good enough for an 8-core, but it, it's it's okay-ish. Anyway, I'll stop the video before it gets over 20 minutes. Some of you might be happy that we finally have a short by Buildzoid standards video. Goodbye.